Welcome back. Women and girls in Afghanistan fearing for their lives and safety as the Taliban takes control. There are reports that the Taliban is already forcing young girls to marry their fighters. While those concerns are growing, President Biden says he supports defending human rights. We'll continue to speak out for the basic rights of the Afghan people, of women and girls, just as we speak out all over the world. I've been clear the human rights must be the center of our foreign policy, not the periphery. But the way to do it is not through endless military deployments. That's fine. But what happens to the women and girls now who are fearing for their lives? Very bad things. Yeah. And in record time, the problem with putting a, a statement out there or having people talk around the issue, and you brought this up in the last segment, we have social media. We've all seen the pictures now. And it, there's not multiple ways to interpret them. It's absolute horror on the streets. It's horror in the airport. Our embassy has been cleared. Our flag was coming home. And that has real symbolic and practical meaning. We are not there anymore to protect them. And I, I think there's this really interesting dichotomy going on. And we've talked about the intelligence community, but Congress also got it right on this. So just a little while ago, Jason Crow, who's a congressman and a veteran, had a bill putting forward to fast-track visa applications for Afghans in light of the fact that we have decided that we're going to be coming home. It was hugely popular. Only 16 uh, Congress people voted against it. Those are the kinds of actions that people who, have, who are serving that we have sent there know need to be taken, and we need answers and an accountability chain of, of how this ended up in this way because those are the people who are going to be suffering the most from a hasty withdrawal. But, Brian, is it just lip service? You know, it's like we heard the same thing from Vice President Harris when she visited the border and she talked about, you know, a, an initiative that she had helping women and girls in Guam, but still really not a root cause. So you can talk about it. You can send thoughts and prayers. But what does that really do? We don't even uh, in her case. Let me just read you what she said about the women. She said nothing. There's nothing to read. She has totally <laughs> skipped over the fact that women will now go back into the uh, back of the house. Be told to raise the kids. You're not allowed to go to school. And when they say they can go to school, well, how many years and what will they do? And I'll bring back to this comment that's widely circulated. But just in case you missed it, Richard Holbrook in his diary said this about Joe Biden when he came to visit. He's trying to say you got to put more time and effort. What about the women you can't want to pull out of Afghanistan in 2008? Biden said, replied with a history lesson. Uh, he said... <laughs> Uh, what he said about the American obligation to Afghan, like the girl in the Kabul school, Biden replied the history lesson from the U.S. withdrawal from Southeast Asia. F them. We don't have to worry about that. We did it in Vietnam. Nixon and Kissinger got a pass. Huh. That's how he felt in his prime. How do you think he feels now? I don't know, but he's he's saying that, you know, fighting misogyny and fighting for women, that is uh, the, the hallmark of his presidency. Should he get a pass? Well, I think that... Um, Nancy Pelosi is going to give him a pass. So she's Speaker of the House. And she said uh, yesterday, yesterday, before the president said anything, that the president is to be commended for the clarity of purpose of his statement on Afghanistan. This is the two page long statement he uh, issued. Uh, and it says we are concerned about reports regarding the Taliban's brutal treatment of all Afghans, especially women and girls. But I also think in some ways they threw up their hands. Now, John Kirby, the spokesman at the Pentagon, I actually think that the way that he answered the Afghan reporter was with a lot more empathy and care and concern and really more representative of how Americans feel, which is, we know this is going to be bad for you and we are sorry. And it was, I thought that was a lot more heartfelt. And for the tone and tenor of the president's speech, maybe could have used a little bit more of that. Yeah, because, you know, this is real life and real death, Greg. And, and I, I think she's absolutely right. I don't think the president touched on that enough. And sometimes uh, these platitudes are empty because who is going to document the, the lives and murders of the women who are left behind and essentially sh subjugated? Yeah, and, I mean, and how, how can we be exporting our values, right, when we consider in our own country that, that our values are oppressive? You know, will the squad we're terrible people? Yeah, we're terrible people. Will the squad defend or condemn this cultural resurgence? Yeah. Right. We've I, we've read it. We've read hard lefties def defend the role of women in radical Islam. So it's going to be really hard to see these people say, wow, we need more American values over there. Right. Good luck. Well, in terms of the squad, they need uh, more history lessons yeah. because Rashida Tlaib uh, sort of botched her explanation of Soviet involvement in Afghanistan.